Hey, this is Asaf Levavi from LinkedInRef.com and it's time for another viewer request. And in this video, we're going to learn a finger style arrangement I've made especially for you guys and girls of Do You Want to Build a Snowman from Disney's Frozen. It's a very melodic, very beautiful song, very short as well. It just repeats itself three times. First, I'm going to play it uh, so you can see and hear how it goes. And then we're going to break it down lick by lick with tabs on the screen as usual. It goes like this. Okay, so what you need to know in order to play this are the following chords. You need to know D, A, G, B minor, and F sharp 7. Okay, again, D, A, G, B minor, and F sharp 7. Okay, and you begin with this. Okay, this is the ending of the line. Um, the first lick is this, okay, before the chord, the first chord comes in, and this is the motif of the song. The motif is a line which repeats itself throughout the song. You will see exactly how many times you're going to play this. Um, and it's an arpeggio of the D chord. Now, an arpeggio, for those of you who don't know, is playing the notes of a chord in sequence. For example, let's take the D chord. This is an arpeggio. This is also an arpeggio. This is also an arpeggio. So, you're gonna play an arpeggio. Put on the D chord and play the B string on 3. It's a D note. Play the B string, the second string, three times. And then play strings one, two, and three. Okay? So you're outlining a D chord. So again, put on the D chord and play second string three times, then strings three, two, and one. Then the chord comes in, but the melody is this. Okay, it's an open E string and then put your finger back on the second string. So take your finger off and make it an open E string, the open first string, and then play the entire chord. Okay, it's technically a D sus2, but it's not D sus2 because the sus2, the open E string, is the melody. So it's a D chord with an E note as its melody. So technically, very technically, you're playing a D sus2 chord, but it's only for half a second because then you're playing the F sharp note again. Put on the finger on the second fret uh, again, complete the D chord, and play the F sharp note. Okay, if this was too confusing, here's a simple explanation. Play the first line, take your second finger off of the fretboard, play the D sus2 chord, then play 
the second fret of the first string again, okay? Put your finger back on. Take it off, put it on, okay? Zero and two on the E string. So, there's your first line. Okay? Then, you play the motif again, and only this time you play the you play it without the first note and without the last note of what you just played. You play the second string twice, then strings three, two, and one. Okay, you're still on D. And now the next note is an open E string, right? This time you play it with an A chord. Okay, you just play strings one, two, three, and five. Okay, five of course being the A string, the open A string, which is our A bass. So we've got this. Okay, still on D, the motif, the arpeggio, then the A chord as our last um, melody note, the open E string and its harmony is the A chord. Then it's this, you're still on the A chord, it should be still ringing, and then you play the E string twice, then three on the B string, okay? Just move your pinky or your third finger, uh, however you're putting the A chord on. Um, I'm putting the second, third, and fourth fingers. I don't use my first finger for the A chord. That's just how I'm used to doing it. You can put it on like this, and then you're using your third finger for the third fret of the B string, or you can put on your pinky. So it's this, okay, and then, okay? So it's the open E string twice, three on the second string, then on the E string, it's zero and two, okay? You're still on the A chord up till now, so it's, okay? I just wanna mention that uh, you have a lot of space to fill in and we're gonna talk about it later. First, we're gonna learn the melody, then we'll learn how we can fill the spaces between the melody lines, between the, between the lyrics, um, because you've got a lot of space. You've got... Okay? You've got a lot of space. So you can fill it in, we'll talk about it later. We were here. Zero, zero on the E string, three on the B string, zero two on the E string. Okay, now bar the second fret and do this. Okay, three pull off to two on the E string. Okay, you're pulling off to the bar and play the A string along with it. It's the B note this time, it's the B bass because we're moving into the B minor chord. So it's, it's this. And then you put on the rest of the B minor chord and you play this. You play strings two, three, and four, respectively on three, four, and four. Okay, it's the B minor chord. So it's this. Okay, so the whole line is this. We were here on A. from three to two on the E string, then play the rest of the B minor chord. Our melody note is the D note again, and it's three on the B string. And then play the E string, it's on two because you're barring. And then it's this. It's the same melody line, it's... Um, you just played it, remember? But this time it's on G. Okay? 
So you're playing E string on two, still on the B minor, then change into G and play the G bass along with three on the E string. You can play the rest of the chord along with it. And then two on the E string and three on the B string. So, okay. So together it sounds like this. Okay, I put on the B minor chord just to show you the transition. Again, it's... Got it? Hope you got it. We're gonna go over it again, don't worry. Then the motif again. Okay, so you put on a D chord again, or you can outline it while keeping the G bass ringing. Let me show you. Okay, with your first and third fingers, or your pinky if it's comfortable for you, just moving around. Third finger for the third fret, first finger for the second fret. So it's, um, and then third finger, first finger, third finger, first finger. Okay, you're outlining the D chord, or you can put on the D chord, and then it sounds like this. Okay, the bass just stops. And it's okay, it's up to you, however you wanna play. So, um, the motif again, I don't think I should outline it, we've already played it twice, but here goes again, B string, um, B string, okay, just once this time, okay, you can play it twice, and then strings 3, 2, and 1, on 2, 3, and 2, which is a D chord, okay, again, you can keep the bass on G and just outline it, Make it a solo, or you can do this. Okay, and just take the bass off. And then this. This is A with a high A note. Just bar the second fret up to the fourth string. Okay, leave the fifth string open. It's A. You need it open. And your pinky on five. So it's a high A note. You've got three A notes here. You've got the A bass, two on the G string, which is A as well, and then a high A. You've got two octaves. Okay? So bar the second fret, except for the fifth string, and put your pinky on five, and play it. So it's this. Let's go over the line again, okay? So, it goes like this, motif. D, zero and two on the E string. Okay, then you've got space to fill in. Talk about it later. Motif again, B string twice. A. E string twice, three on the B string, on the E string zero two, bar the second fret, pull off from three on the E string, put on the B minor chord, two on the E string, it's the bar, G, then three two on the E string, three on the B string, Motif again, A with a high A note, okay, that's our line, let me play it. the bar 
for the next line. So don't take it off. It's this. Okay? Um, no, it's, it's the, the G note comes around twice, so it's... Okay, and then it's this. Um, it's, um, it's still on A at first. And then it's B minor again. And you can play a B minor 7. We're going to talk about it in a second. You're still barring. You're here. Okay? You're still barring. And the chord is still ringing. And you're playing 3, 3, 2, 2, 3. Okay? 2 is the bar. Just add another finger. On the E string. Okay? Then, rebar to encapsulate the, the B bass this time. Put on a finger on the third fret of the B string if you want to harmonize. If you don't want to harmonize, just play five on the E string with your pinky again and play the bass. And then play the rest of the chord. Okay, it works. Let me show you. But I think it's kind of empty because you want to use the, the full chord this time. Um, that's just how I feel the composition. Um, again, it's your arrangement. You can do whatever you like. You can play it any way you like. If you find a better way to play it, if you, if you want to change um, what I play, feel free. Create your own arrangement. It's how you want to play it. So feel free to play it how you play it. Oh, okay, I've said it enough times. Uh, enough stalling. Okay, rebar, and then put your finger on the second, uh, the second string on the third fret, and then play this, which is B minor seven, because the both um, both the E string and the G string. Uh, play um, an A note, which is the seventh of the B minor chord. Um, so you're playing this, okay? You're playing B minor seven, five on the um, on the E string with your pinky, and then you can put on the third finger on four on the D string and play that play strings two, three, and four. Or you can just play three on the B string because that's the melody note. I just like to harmonize whenever I can. So here are your options again. Just the note. Harmonize. One not harmonized, one harmonized. One harmonized, one not harmonized. Okay? Any way you want. Um, and then you're on B minor or B minor 7. You can take the pinky off now. Yeah. He is providing rhythm. He's a metronome. Too bad that's not the BPM we need. Um, and you play this. Okay, so all you need to do is play the B string on three once again. Then put on the D sus2 again and turn it into D again. In which you play the entire chord with an open E string. Two on the B, uh, two on the E string make it a D chord again, and play the B string on three, which is inside the chord. So, um, again, the explanation sounds a lot more confusing than it really is. It's just D sus2, back to D, and then playing the B string. Okay, so both lines together. Okay, that's it. 
and then um, you play the B string again, and you play B minor, you play the entire chord, and then play the B string twice, okay? If you notice, it's still the motif, it's still the F sharp note and the D note all around, okay? You're playing with these two notes all the time, and the E, the E note, you're playing with D, E, and F sharp all the time. That's what I mean when I say it's a motif. Um, you're still breaking this line down all the time. Um, so, B minor. Okay, the chord. Our melody note is the F sharp note. Then, B string twice. Then, the F sharp seven. Now, it's important to put it on like this, with your pinky. I mean, put on F sharp, okay? Take the pinky off, it's already F sharp seven, but we need the high seven. So put the pinky on five on the B string. Okay, we need this note, the high seventh note. So, you play this. Our melody is the B string on 5, the E string on 2, which again is E and F sharp. Um, you can harmonize with the, of course, play the bass with, with, the, e, um, with the E note, play the F sharp bass. You can harmonize with the G string. You can harmonize with the G and D strings. Okay, I think the D string is unnecessary because it's the octave. Okay, it's another E note, so you don't really need it. So just I just play the G string along with it. Okay, and that's enough for me. And then first finger on three on the bass. It's G. Pinky on 7 on the E string, which makes it a very specific voicing of the G chord. Okay, because this is G as well. Okay, the B note is a part of the G chord. So it's this. Okay, so... is this. That's it. So, let's repeat the line. B minor 7. D. B minor. F sharp 7. G. Okay? Now, the motif again, and it's the same line as the beginning, okay, it's the motif, and then D with 0 and 2 on the E string, so it's the same thing. Then the motif again with B string twice. then it's G. Now we're gonna play a G6 because we need the open E string. Okay, so put the, um, the second finger, I mean the second finger of the, of the G chord, because um, I'm usually, when I play finger style, I usually don't put on the, the low B note because um, well, I don't know, that's just how I'm used to it. Um, it's a lot more comfortable because we don't need to play it right now, so I just keep it off. So when I say the second finger of the G string, I mean this. When we play this, this is a G chord. It's three on the E string, so now take 
that finger and put it on three on the B string because that's what you need because it's again the motif. It's the E note and then the D note. Okay, so play. Um, you can play the the entire G6 chord. Okay, with all uh, E, B, and G strings open and the G bass, and then add the D note. Three on the B string, I harmonize with the G string just to make it a bit full. Um, you don't have to. The melody is okay, it's just the open E string and three on the B string, as usual. Um, but again, I like to harmonize, so it's entire chord and put on three on the B string. Then um, I like to lead into the final line, which is this. Okay, this is the next line. I like to play an A chord before that. Okay, you can just play the bass, the A bass. So it sounds like this. Okay, the A bass is enough. You can play the A chord, you can do this. Okay, you can just outline the A chord. Okay, but now we're filling space. Let's keep that for until we're finished with the melody. Last line of the melody is this. Three and two on the B string, then put on the D string and play strings two, three, and four. And you're done with the melody of Do You Wanna Build a Snowman. Last line was this. don't need to explain this anymore, right? Then the motif again, G6, A if you want, 3, 2 on the B string, D5. Okay, it's D5 because we're not playing the E string. You can play the E string, okay, but then the E string takes the spotlight away from the original note, which is D. Motif again. Okay, so, from the top, and then we're gonna talk about filling space. D. A. B minor. G, A, okay, that was our first line, B minor, 7, D, B minor, F sharp 7, G, motif, D, about filling spaces. In short, you can do whatever you like. Play the chord, just play the chord in any, in any form that you deem appropriate. Okay, if you want to play the entire chord, play the entire chord. If you want to dissect it and, and arpeggiate it, arpeggiate it. If you want to add notes to it, just like I add the sus2 to it, do it. Just like I add the sus2, the sus2 to it, do it. I uh, uh, never mind. Um, okay, so what do I mean by that? Let's start from the top. Okay, that's one way to do it. You can also do it like this. Okay? Very minimalistic. You can even go farther. That's 
also enough. You can exaggerate. Okay, and fill it with lots of notes. You can add the sus too. Okay? Just like I did with the A when I played it because, um, I don't know, sounded fine to me. Um, The, um, the pinky on the B string. That's just what I felt like, I felt like doing. Um, but you don't have to. Uh, let me give you a few examples. Okay, I'm gonna play it a couple, a couple of times and I'm gonna try and vary it. Okay? Try to pay attention to what I'm doing. Sometimes I'm gonna play a few notes, sometimes I'm gonna exaggerate, sometimes I'm gonna embellish it. Um, I'm going to harmonize, I'm going to play single notes, I'm going to play bass notes, so you can see the options, okay? And if I, if I succeed, I will guide you into what I'm doing, okay? Learning by example is better than just talking about it. So, you see I added a chord. time to fill here so I just played the chord okay and then I led into the F sharp note so I played this I just played the entire chord and then here we don't have time at all okay and here we have all the time in the world so um, gonna talk about a hammer on but you can hammer stuff on okay you can hammer on the sus4 this time instead of moving from sus2 back to the chord you can hammer on the, ha the, the sus2 on 3 on the B string again you don't have to and just show you uh, examples Instead of playing the melody, I hammered it on. Okay, you can play it. It's your own arrangement. So feel free to change it. Okay, slid into it. Didn't work out. Maybe for you it will. Okay, and then I embellished it, I played it. Okay, instead of... I just added some interest, uh, because we've played the motif like a thousand times by now. So I just slid into it. And then played the chord, I strummed the chord. Okay? Um, it's a kind of a fast arpeggio. And then... made a melody out of them. I'm improvising here. I, I'm, I'm just showing you options. I'm thinking about options while I'm playing. Um, I know that most of that doesn't sound really good. Um, okay? Or you can just do this. chord at the end there and then you uh, you begin again because the song repeats itself three times now it's got a cinematic um, overture in the middle um, 
But we're talking about the song and making a fingerstyle version of the song, so that's the song. Uh, I hope you understood what I was talking about when I talk about spaces. Again, let me play it from the top slowly and try to fill it in, okay? Try to listen. slowly. You don't have to play it in the original tempo of the song. So you're done. Before you go, please subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. I've got a ton of lessons to teach you for free, always for free, and all I ask in return is for you to subscribe and if you can, share the lessons. If you like the lessons, please share them so others can enjoy them as well. Um, go to the website, download the tab, the tab is for free as well everything is for free but if you want to give something back you can push the donate button and make a donation to lick and riff everything goes back to lick and riff to making time for these arrangements and for these lessons and i thank you very very much for any donation you choose to make and i hope you enjoyed this lesson go play it go get it under your fingers practice it make your own arrangement of this enjoy and i will see you the next lesson Thank you very much for watching.